because you know when you're exerting yourself you need more oxygen not less oxygen she said no that's okay we'll just leave them be i took my students on that gym class because i wasn't going to allow that to happen to them fear As we all know, fear is being weaponized. It's actually being weaponized in the classrooms even more so. There has been cases where there was a classroom that was inside at lunchtime and they decided that they would roll in the TV and have the kids watch the news. Well, what do we think of the news? Is the news show Gerd News and bring up your vibration? No. They had these children watch the news saying about the vaccines are safe and effective and wear your mask and all that. This is not acceptable to have in a classroom. Kids should not be watching the news and be dealing with any of these politics. Schools and politicians have to stop using our kids as pawns in their political sick satanic game because it is yeah. a sick satanic game. That's right. These measures are not safe and effective in school. I want to ask all of you, I want to see a round of hands. How many of you have actually walked inside your child's classroom? None of you. None of you. How many of you, I see one, how many of you have actually had an inside classroom interview with your teacher about your student's progress, your child's progress? Have any of you? One person. One person, two person. That's unacceptable. In my school, they had a table blocking the front door of our school. And when someone came to the door, I saw the secretary of administration run to the door. Oh my God, it's almost like a terrorist coming in. We can't let them come in. You have to stand outside. Ask yourself, why are they not letting you inside? I'll tell you why. It's just like we're not allowed to go to school board meetings and you see them on YouTube. The US has school board meetings. You can walk inside and say how you feel. You can have students come in and say, I don't want to do this anymore. It's all control. You need to see what's on the walls in these classrooms, hallways. You need to see what's on their tables. You need to see the equipment that these kids are given. It's unacceptable. And that's why we're seeing the rise of behavior, depression, segregation, it's happening in these schools. They are conditioning your kids to just live fear. Fear, that's it. Fear just breathes everywhere. These measures are not safe and effective and not necessary in the school. And we all know that's causing a lot of emotional, physically, and psychologically damning our children. We are going to see that just like the war vets, when they go into war, they have PTSD. Our kids are going to be suffering like PTSD, because that's what it is. The trauma that they're suffering is going to be as similar to that. They are suffering. The conditioning is the fear of the virus, and the sanitizing is beyond. Mental health and suicide is skyrocketed. Mass exemptions are isolated. Speaking and singing is banned in the school. We didn't sing birthdays. We didn't sing Canada Day. You know what the garbage that they wanted them to sing? Black Lives Matter song by Rafi. I got the email with the song of all the words they wanted them to sing, but we can't celebrate a child's birthday in the classroom just like we did every year. We can't have Valentine's Day. We can't have any celebration or joy. Are you kidding me? These kids need joy to come to school. They need to celebrate them, but it's not happening. Also with these masks, we're seeing language skills delayed. Special needs are having a very tough time in school, trying to understand why they're having to wear a mask and a face shield. Can't touch your friends, can't touch a ball, can't touch this, can't touch that. It is getting ridiculous. Under Section 11, under the Health Care Act, these schools are violating. The liability personnel, giving medical advice by teachers, superintendent or a school board is violating that section 11, 11 health care act you need out of your obligation to your children file a complaint now they are violating that this is not a new health care act that we just made up it's been there 
and we need to use these acts to bring down this corruption. I also listened to a talk from a formal child protection worker who works with the Ministry of Children and Families, and she educated me on a few things. Under the BC Child Protection Legislation, Family and Community Services, Section 13, when protection is needed, and Section 14, duty to report, can be used. Schools are considered acting in the role of a parent when children are under their care. You need to file a complaint. When you are not there, we are putting trust in these teachers, administration, to look and do what's best for our children, and they're not. Now, along with the vaccine, um, we all know that they had the Infant Minor Act that they were trying to override with the School Act. The Infant Minor Act used to be 12 years and up, that they did not need consent from any of you. They just changed that recently. Go have a look. It says 19 years and under, you do not need consent to do any medical procedure, testing, or vaccination. What the heck are they doing? They're changing laws right in front of us to suit them best. They can go and jab your child in the classroom while you're happily at work thinking that they're safe without your consent. These people are not medical professionals. They do not know that your child might have an allergy to what's in these vaccines. Do anybody here know what's in these vaccines? No. I know the inserts for the vaccines are white. They're blank. You can't Google it. You can't find anything. Yet they're vaccinating our kids with unknown substances that they have no freaking clue if it's going to kill them or it's going to harm them. And we are seeing it. We are seeing the rise of heart inflammation, pterocytis, myocarditis, thrombosis, the list goes on and on and on. You need to serve your teachers and the vice principals. <laughs> they can still hear me. You need to serve your vice principals, administrators, school and board of trustees with the Action for Canada notice that puts them liable. Liable for any testing, because I'll tell you, they do have testing boxes in the classrooms and in the administrative office box. I saw it myself. It's the Swish Spit Test. Since when do our schools become hospitals and clinics? Our schools are supposed to be a place of education not this political game of turning them all into super soldiers, just getting them to comply. It has to stop with you. You tell your kid that anybody comes to you and tries to get you to test, to put on a mask, to jab something in your arm, you run. Just like we taught them with stranger danger, you tell your kid, empower them, that they do not have to listen to any adult in the school system that wants to inject them against their will. We've always told our kids in school, listen to your teacher? No, not this time. Not this time. Uh, I'm gonna try and get to something a little bit more. Um, I've been following the money trail, because we all know the money trail is huge in doing all these mandates. The Ontario Teachers Union, and I'm sure the same union here for the BCTF, the Ontario Teachers Union, I have a screenshot that that union has shares in the vaccines. Johnson & Johnson, yeah, I have it all. Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Moderna, all AstraZeneca, they have shares in these stocks. What the hell is going on? Why are there shares in stocks for Pfizer? All these vaccine companies, including Costco and the big box stores. I told all the teachers from the BCTF, stop paying your union dues, because your union dues are not going to where you think they're going. They're using them for the vaccine that they want to inject in you for you to keep your job. You're paying for your own death. Now, with BCTF, Terry Mooring, who's the president 
I want you to know that she was served by myself and another lady in June at the front office. <laughs> myself and another lady who is my woman warrior, we served them at the front, uh, front door of the BCDF building down in Vancouver. We served them in action for Canada notice saying that they are liable for any damages that happen to our children. We've also served the Board of Trustees for the Vancouver School Board and we're a delegate. We actually FedEx to them before the meeting. Before the meeting, we had to go through hoops of being a delegate for this meeting. All these meetings are done from the cushiness of their house. Oh, how nice. They were given slides of all the doctor stats of this side adverse reactions to these vaccines they didn't show youtube people the public who watched this board meeting in june nobody saw the slides that they were given all the doctor stats of the harms and death nobody saw it the only question they had for us was who are you with what group are you with what does it matter what does it matter what group are with that was the only question. We followed up with, can we have a meeting with you? A Zoom meeting perhaps? Some sort of meeting so that we could get the questions answered? This is a direct message from Susan Huffman. Some of you may not know. She used to be the superintendent for the Vancouver School Board. Now she's the second highest CEO paid for the Board of Trustees. I got an email response from her. This is what she had to say. I felt that when you went to that board meeting, that we took advantage of their time. Their time? Uh, hello? We paid for that time. I have the right to state what I have to state to protect the children. We also, in that letter, she didn't want to meet us, she didn't want to discuss with us, she didn't want to go over anything we had to say. And to back up just a little bit, the Vancouver school boards wanted to do vaccine clinics inside your gyms and your cafeterias. And we and a bunch of other people won that. We stopped that from happening. Good for you. And I'm gonna tell you how you can do it. It was that easy. Luckily, we had a Vancouver police officer that day who had some morals, had some ethics to be able to stand up for kids. So this is what we did. We went back to the school board office. We asked for the deputy superintendent to come down. We asked for him to take these vaccine clinics out of schools. We have an audio recording of that that can be used in court. I suggest that if you go to any of them, you do an audio recording of you serving them. So we had an audio record of him stating that none of this would happen. So what they did is they did it outside on the school grounds which is still not okay. So when Susan Huffman back to her email, she didn't like that, we went over her head. Tough shit, tough shit. Sorry to be swearing. <laughs>